To solve inequalities, we have to first solve an equation. So these are set side by side, so that way we can see what they look like. But usually, your first step in solving an inequality is to set it equal to zero. So that's why we have part A to do first, which is like we've been doing all week. We're going to add one to both sides. So we get 2 cosine x equals 1 divide by 2. So cosine x equals 1 half. Cosine is positive, so it's going to be in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4. My reference angle is when cosine is equal to 1 half, which is 60 degrees or pi over 3. So that's my quadrant 1 angle. My quadrant 2, um, my quadrant 4 angle is going to be pi over 3 in quadrant 4, which is 5 pi over 3. So if I'm solving an equation, it's those two values. When I solve an inequality, we have to solve the equation first and then pick our test points. So I know that x is equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 already. I've kind of skipped a few steps because we just did the equation in part A. And I am going to draw out a number line and label pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 on my number line. I have just less than, so that means I have an open circle. If there was a less than or equal to, then it would have been a closed circle. So I have an open circle at pi over 3 and an open circle at 5 pi over 3. And we have to figure out where to shade. Do I shade in between them or shade outside? Two ways to do it. The first way is to choose a test point, which is what we used to do when we solved all other types of inequalities. So I need a test point inside the interval. So the easiest one to pick here is pi, which is really 3 pi over 3, which is how I know it's in between those values. So I want to know 2 cosine x minus 1 is that less than 0. And I'm using my test point. So 2 cosine pi minus 1 is that less than 0. So I have to evaluate using my unit circle or my chart. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So I have negative 2 minus 1 is less than 0, which is true because negative 3 is less than 0. So because my test point made my inequality true, we shade over it. If my test point made it false, I would shade away from it or outside. So my answer is pi over 3 is less than x, which is less than 5 pi over 3, or in interval notation, pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3 in parentheses. The other option, instead of choosing a test point, would be to use your graph. So if I drew a picture of my cosine graph, it looks like that. This is pi over 2. Whoops. This is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. My value was... Back over here, when I was talking about cosine x equaling one half. So that is somewhere here on my graph. And I know that it hits here at pi over 3 and here at 5 pi over 3 based on my two values that we found in part x. But I don't want the values that make it equal. I want the values that make it less than. So I want it below. So I could shade on my graph here, which is the same thing, pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3. So you can do it visually with the graph, or you can do it algebraically with a test point and substituting it. 
So our next one is an inequality, but I'm going to start by setting it equal. Tangent, sorry, 3 tangent of x plus radical 3 equals 0, and I'm going to solve. So I subtract radical 3 on both sides. 3 tan x equals negative radical 3. Divide by 3. So tangent x is equal to negative rad 3 over 3. So tangent is negative, which means I need to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. My reference angle for tangent of radical 3 over 3 is going to be 30 degrees or pi over 6 because we're working in radians again. So in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4, it's 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. If I was solving the equation, those would be my answers. But I'm solving the inequalities, so those are what we call our critical values. So if I draw a number line, those are the values I'm going to put on there. 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And if I go back to the original, it has an underline, so it's going to be a closed circle. So I have a closed circle here and a closed circle here. Because there is a tangent in this question, we also have to talk about the undefines or our asymptotes. Those need to get plotted on your number line as well. So my asymptotes for tangent occur at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. So I'm going to add those to my number line. So pi over 2 would be here. It's going to get an open circle because it's an asymptote, so it can't be equal. And 3 pi over 2 is somewhere in here with an open circle as well. If you need to put these as over 6s, that's fine. This would be 3 pi over 6, and this one would be 9 pi over 6, if it just makes it easier for you to have all different, I mean, all the same denominators. So now I need to choose test points, and this time there are multiple intervals to test. So I think for tangent, the easier method is to use the graph. So I'm going to sketch a picture of my graph. And if I go all the way back to the question, it says from 0 to 2 pi. So that's where I can start and stop my graph. So 0, my first asymptote is at pi over 2. And then my next asymptote is at 3 pi over 2. Tangent is equal to 0 at 0, at pi, and at 2 pi. And tangent looks like this in between them. But I only need from here to here, so I'm not going to finish those other two pieces. So this is my tangent graph. I am working with negative radical 3 over 3. So I don't know where exactly that is, but I know it's someplace down here because it has to be negative. And I know that it equals negative radical 3 over 3 at my two critical values here at 5 pi over 6 and here at 11 pi over 6. But I don't want it to be equal. I want it to be less than or equal. So I'm going to shade where it is less than or equal to that value. So it's going to start at my asymptote, which is pi over 2. Because it's an asymptote, it gets parentheses. And it's less than until I get to my critical value of 5 pi over 6, which gets a bracket because it's less than or equal to. Union, my next asymptote of 3 pi over 2, to this critical value here, which is 11 pi over 6, which gets a bracket. If you wanted to instead, you could have chosen test points, but you would need to choose test points and plug it into the original inequality to see if it makes it true or false for each of your intervals. If you had done that on this number line, it would have been shaded here and shaded there, which gives you the same inequality that we had 
down here as our final answer.